Since Knows What You Need, the uh, show has got bigger. I actually performed in front of, in front of 13,000 people at Calgary Folk Festival with my guitar turned off. <laughs> that was uh, pretty funny. And um, yeah, I did a tour with the Constantines, which was, which was great. During that time, things started just to deteriorate as a band and uh, personal life too. And, it came to a point where I had to leave Toronto. It was a really strange point in time because one of, uh, there was like this group of close friends and, and I like blew up and he, he got sick with leukemia. So it was this weird sort of tearing apart and coming together for them. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I did just sort of cut myself off that circle. It's a strange persona that I've created because it's not a persona, it's myself. Like other bands sort of like can get away with, I, w I don't want to say a shtick, I guess persona that I don't think I have. <laughs> well, it, it's myself, it's my story, it's, it's my real emotions that I'm writing about. So it's very open and it's very public, which it, I'm not comfortable with so much, but it's how it is. So. I, I mean, people knew about it, and people talked about sort of the, the downfall of the band and my marriage and stuff like that. It was inevitable. It was a public thing. Yeah. I'm a big talker. Well, I'm just a big talker. Gets me by. You can stick a needle in my eye. My word is true, and that's no lie. I'm a big talker. So I went back to Kelowna. Once I got there, I, it was like I let out a deep breath and was just like, oh, this is a, it's a safe place, I can relax, yeah. yeah. I did a demo of about six songs, um, which was sort of the beginning of what Old Maria became. And uh, yeah, that, that was actually really a real outpouring of creativity that had been stifled for about a year and a half. Actually, the idea for it came when I was living in Toronto. I read uh, Brett Easton Ellis. Uh, his book American Psycho and was totally disturbed by it but realized the humanity in the man in the book and so I started thinking about the humanity of a killer <laughs> and how, how it's hard to think of a killer as a human as a monster generally so I, I wanted to sort of write a story about uh, a killer and his, his emotional side and what he what he thinks I don't know why I'm obsessed with killers but <laughs> Just some, uh, the macabre, I guess. Just the macabre aspect of, or side of my life, I guess. I, I and also I came, I, I got to thinking about it and sort of became, uh, I sort of related to it because I, I did some terrible things while I was here and, um, sort of wanted to explore the dark, the darkness and why, why, so, why someone would do that. Although I didn't really talk about why, I just sort of talked about how <laughs> in the album. <laughs> kind of terrible thing, I don't uh, know to talk about them, but... 
Uh, betrayal, I think, was the darkest. Yeah. Are you are you over those things? Have you kind of come to terms with what happened mm, in your life? Yes, yes. I mean, forgiveness is difficult. Forgiving yourself, but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm close. Yeah. I'm a big talk.